Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. My name is Richard Betts, and I'm joined this week by Dan Innes and Nicole Dines. And of course, the war in Ukraine continues to be the main story across international markets and an increasing number of stories reflecting the influence on the real estate markets. But um, Dan, what have you been watching? Uh, well, this week I've been following a few stories. Uh, one uh, has been the Fithorn Trust. They've uh, signed a deal to sell its UK logistics portfolio to Kane International for £550 million. And that um, portfolio includes seven sites in the UK, um, about 3.25 million square feet across 22 different assets, um, including two newly built developments. But that sale also includes five consented land sites that are are set for completion later this year and early next year. Um, And that transaction, um, it's scheduled to complete at the end of this uh, first quarter. And it marks the investment firm's first foray into the logistics world. You know, so that's Kane having already acquired hospitality assets, including Prezzo and Swingers, um, it's, uh, it's another name to, to add to the, uh, to the logistics market. Elsewhere, um, in London, uh, Night Dragon, uh, the Hong Kong-based developer, they've announced that it's going to uh, develop about 5,000 uh, homes in a neighbourhood in Greenwich, South East London, uh, with a development value of about £2.5 billion. Pounds. And um, all that, it, it's all part of, the, of a wider £8.4 billion pound Greenwich Peninsula regeneration that's been mooted for quite some time. And the developer, they've also revealed plans for Meridian Keys, which is a, a seven-acre mixed-use uh, scheme, um, and that comprises leisure, food and beverage, hotels, and a school. Overall, that Greenwich Peninsula project, that aims to deliver over 17,000 new homes on that 150-acre site, which uh, Night Dragon has quite neatly packaged up as describing it as twice the size of Soho. And then lastly, um, in quite a surprise move uh, this week, Amazon has announced that it's going to close all 68 of its brick and mortar bookstores and shops carrying those um, toys and home goods in both the US and the UK, which is going to end some of its longest running uh, retail experiments. Um, you know, most recently, you'll remember some of the some of the company's innovations like its four star stores, some of which which opened only really at the end of last year. But apparently um, the results coming from those stores, they're not enough uh, to counter the marched on, you know, on online shopping that Amazon kind of it kicked off itself. But the, the physical store revenue um, is only three percent of Amazon's $137 billion sales um, in the last quarter. So, I mean, the result of all of that, I mean, is that Amazon's going to focus more on its grocery markets and its department store concept going forward. um, And that, uh, you know, that grocery walkout market, which we've been following quite closely, Richard. Yeah, on that retail side, I noticed that Nordstrom, the US department store, saw its share price rise by 38% on news of higher than forecast full revenue and profit numbers, with both Coles and Macy's also expected to exceed forecast. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a similar bounce back in Europe. Um, and Savills also released their European retail report with Eri Mitz Stereo highlighting the rise in convenience retail to over 50% of overall investment. Um, and in one of the responses to the war in Ukraine, IKEA, who have a significant footprint in Russia, have closed all their stores and factories and join an increasing exodus of firms from the Russian market. Um, Nicole, what have you been following? Well, another uh, direct consequence of, of the invasion of Ukraine has been the, the British government announcing something that had been muted for, for several years, uh, which is a property register. It was first mentioned by David Cameron in 2016 by the government being sort of dragging their feet for various reasons. Uh, now it's, it's happening, it's being presented to parliament and uh, everyone is agreed, all parties, so it will probably be approved very quickly. It is set to change the prime property market in London and England quite, quite significantly because obviously it's been named the, the sort of anti-oligarch bill. Uh, it is obviously targeted at Russian uh, millionaires billionaires who've been buying, as we know, massive estates in Surrey or mansions in in Highgate and other um, smart areas of London. Um, The the idea of the register is that no one will be able to buy a property anonymously, you know, hiding behind shell companies and, you know, located offshore or a web of companies as it often happens. So whoever buys a property will have to be transparent and will have to, you know, 
be, the, be recorded by the so-called beneficial owner. Not only that, but, it's, but the measure is retroactive, so it actually goes back 20 years. So the British authorities, in theory, could uh, go back and look at deals, real estate deals that have been done over the last 20 years, and 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 question them and ask people to you know come up with their with the real owner, which is obviously. Uh, you know, as I was saying, targeted at Russians, uh, oligarchs uh, who are not flavor of the month, as we know, but uh, but obviously will impact everyone. And I'm sure um, that, you know, that will have an impact, obviously, on Chinese buyers, um, you know, Middle Eastern buyers and so on. And also they want to really hit hard because Michael Gove has also said that they actually want to have the power to expropriate properties belonging to Russian oligarchs and uh, without compensation. And he's even said that he wants to use these properties to house um, Ukrainian refugees, uh, which is you know, a very laudable idea in theory, but I'm not sure how practical it is. And also, you have to think about the impact, uh, again, on the reputation of the UK uh, property market. It is very important if they do this to ring fence it so that they the, the send a clear message that you know, property is still sacrosanct in the UK, that cannot, you know, it's not, it's not going to become a habit for the British government to expropriate um, you know, properties, uh, real estate properties without compensation. So very laudable intentions, uh, very interesting that it's going to come through so quickly, but a lot of details to be worked through and that yet another consequence of, of the invasion of Ukraine on, on, the, on the market. Changing the subject completely, um, we've talked about Milan a lot about being you know, a magnet for foreign investors that seems uh, set to continue. And this week, JP Morgan, in a joint venture with an Italian partner called Maston, has announced uh, his bought a portfolio in San Babila, which is the central square in Milan, 112 million euros. And it is going to refurbish, repurpose and modernize the properties to bring them back to the original sort of beauty and splendor, they said. So very much a, an investment in, in Milan and also shows the importance of finding a good partner, a good local partner to do, you know, operating partner. And Maston actually has been, uh, has, even though it's a very new company, it has managed to do investments with, you know, joint ventures, but not just with JP Morgan, but also with Goldman Sachs, Henderson Park and BlackRock. So another subject we talked about a lot is impact investing. It's something we follow very closely at Real Asset Media. And uh, Segro, UK REIT, which is listed on the London Stock Exchange, but also on Euronext, uh, has announced it's uh, a massive community project, which are targeting both the environment, but also local youths and uh, long-term unemployed. So they're sort of ticking both boxes at the same time, you know, investing in um, in uh, upgrading their skills to, to work in sustainability, you know, in the green projects, green in the, the cities or urban areas. So uh, a good combination of both uh, the, the E of uh, environment and the S of social impact. And on that ESG side, we're also seeing a much stronger drive now for renewable energy. I'm bound to have an influence on the infrastructure side. And picking up on the logistics sector news, um, Europa Capital Law launched 150 million euro CE logistics fund. So good to see this positive investment in the region. And in our recent focus on logistics, the speakers talked about the potential increases in oil, inflation and supply chain disruption from the war in Ukraine. And we're already beginning to see this coming through in terms of oil prices. And in another fallout from the war, MIPIM announced that Russian attendees would be banned as it strongly condemned the actions of Russia. And my social media has been full of companies announcing that they're exiting the Russian market, denouncing the actions of Russia and offering support. And of course, our thoughts remain with all those affected by this terrible war. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for watching us and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the real asset markets. Mm-hmm.